So, my name's Nefka. Um, I'm going to give you a personal view of uh, recovering from cancer treatment, and I'll emphasise that. It is a personal view. You, you might not identify with some of the things that I'm going to say, and I don't know what you're expecting, and this might not be it. But, hopefully, it may be useful in some, some way for you. So, um, I was diagnosed with uh, bowel cancer in... 2014, end of 2013, and I had uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy here at the Christie, and surgery uh, more than my fair share. In fact, to link to Ben's talk earlier, uh, I've got a semicolon. <laughs> uh, you like that? I'm not sure whether you gathered, got the implication of that from, from what you'd been reading. Uh, I, all of my treatment along those lines was at Stepping Hill. This isn't a picture of Stepping Hill, by the way. Uh, it's just when I was looking for a picture of a patient in a hospital bed, that one made me smile. So I thought I'd, I'd uh, stick that one up on the presentation. Um, while I was in hospital, sometimes it seemed that I wasn't getting better day to day. But when I look back over two or three days, I could see improvements. Uh, small, but improvements. And after just about two weeks, uh, I was able to go home, though still with a long way to go to get back to normal. Um, I, I also felt that I owed the healthcare people something. So once I felt recovered enough, I started volunteering uh, with Macmillan. And actually, that's, that's why I'm here today, as opposed to some other Joe blogs that might have popped up. Um, so, w when I was asked to give this presentation, I wanted to say something about what has helped me get back to normal or near to it, uh, and what is normal. Um, everyone's different, and we all make our own way along our so-called cancer journey. Um, that expression, cancer journey, it's used a lot, and it can seem a bit corny, a cliché, um, but it's a good analogy to use. So, if it's a journey, you can look back, and you can look forward, uh, and if it's a journey, you can see milestones along the way, hence the title of my uh, talk today. So, I like to think about the milestones along my journey, and I want to share some examples of these with you today. Um, when, I, when I look back to the beginning of my treatment and to where I am now, uh, obviously that's, that's quite a long time, really, uh, for me, and there are too many milestones, really, and some of them that seemed very significant at the time are now little things that don't really matter. Things like having a catheter removed, uh, getting, the, getting the staples taken out of your, your surgical wound. Big deal at the time. Massive. But now, look back, I would almost forgot about those kinds of things. It doesn't really matter. Um, so, I've, this is my top ten, and it's personal. Some of it, you might think, ah, uh, that kind of relates to me. And you might think otherwise, I just, I, I, you know, no relevance to me whatsoever. But take the principle and think of the points of what I'm making. So I've narrowed it down to a top ten. Uh, and I'll quickly, or maybe not so quickly, go through these with you. Uh, number one, this is in chronological order, by the way, in order of the, the way that the things happened. This is not in order of importance. So uh, going home after surgery, going home from the hospital to home, that was a really big thing for me in terms of getting better because I felt like I was a proper person again. Um, you know, I was at home. I couldn't do much, but I was at home. That was great. And something else looking back that was really uh, a, a big deal for me was walking from home to the post box at the end of the road. Probably 200 yards. It must have taken me about 20 minutes. But it was great to do that. And it was significant. It meant I'm getting better. Um, and then, the big expedition, walking down to the local shops. I, I can't remember how long it took me. It seemed like all day, but it wasn't all day, obviously. It takes me ten minutes now. 
And again, that was a big deal for me. Um, and uh, I wanted to get active. That's been a bit of a message today, hasn't it? Getting active. Uh, um, I couldn't do the things I used to do before I was ill. Um, I, I used to go on very long walks in the countryside. Uh, I'd solo walk to the Pennine Way, uh, 270 miles in 15 days, 18 miles a day. I can't even do that now, and I feel as though I'm recovered. Uh, my fitness had just dropped so much. But I wanted to do something, and I took up archery. Can you read that? That's last year. I feel pretty proud about that. Um, number five, our third grandchild was born, uh, which was great. There she is. Uh, she's uh, nearly four now. Uh, our first holiday after surgery, including a three-hour flight. And that, you might think, well, what's so good about that? But that was a big thing for me, getting on an aeroplane for three hours. Um, absolutely brilliant. Um, number seven, my wife and I celebrated our 45th wedding anniversary, uh, which is great, obviously. I don't look old enough to have <laughs> been married for 45 years. I got married when I was 10. Um, <laughs> you believe that, don't you? And, but now, at, at this stage in my chron chronology, I'm looking forwards instead of backwards. Uh, our fourth grandchild is due in January next year, which we're looking forward to, and also next year to give the game away. It's my 65th birthday, uh, which is a bit of a milestone for anybody, because at one point, actually, I never even thought I, I might get that far. So I'm then looking forward to being 70, 80, 120, who knows, I don't care. I'm going to live forever. Uh, and the, the final thing, number 10, is that my next hospital appointment, touch wood, will be my five years clear of cancer. So that's a great place to be. Um, it might come back. Who knows? But I'm at no more risk than anybody else in the population. And so the people at the hospital will say, bye-bye, we don't want to see you again. And I'll say, OK, fine, I'm not coming back. Uh, and that'll take me into the next part of my journey. And who knows, in a few years' time, I might be standing here again with a different set of milestones. Um, I want to ask you a question, and I, and I really want an answer from somebody, at least one person. Um, did you notice anything that my milestones have in common? There's something that links all of them together. Time. Maybe one word. Anybody? Time. No. Interesting, but no. They're, They're mine. That is true. But it's not what I'm thinking of. I'll give you a clue. The technical amongst you. Might understand that. Positive. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's important to be positive. It's important to remember the good things and look forward to the good things. Okay. Bad things happen. Uh, but concentrating on the positives helps you feel better and get better. Also, I noticed, that's me by the way, there, <laughs> a, few, a few years ago, um, I noticed that only five of my top ten milestones relate to my physical recovery. So I'm thinking that physical recovery is only half the story uh, of my journey, and maybe yours too. A large part of recovery is in the mind. I think you might agree with that. Um, it's emotional, it's to do with relationships, uh, with its friends and family, and, it, and it's doing stuff. Um, so my message, if I'm stood here preaching to you, is very, very simple. Think about your milestones, the good ones, especially the ones to look forward to. Uh, enjoy your family and friends, uh, and do stuff, maybe not archery, but do something. Uh, it helped me, and I think it can help you. Um, before I, I actually finish this uh, 
little presentation. I just want to, just want to plug, if I can, the Macmillan User Involvement Programme, which I volunteer with. Uh, and if you want to get involved in something that, that's cancer-related, that makes you feel as though you're giving something back, and it's something to do, and it's something interesting, and it's something to keep your brain moving, and you're actually helping to make a difference within the Greater Manchester Cancer, uh, in improving cancer services, giving a patient's perspective or a carer's perspective. And if you want to get involved in that, then either ask me and I can give you the details, look on the Macmillan website. Uh, Paula knows all about it because she's been involved in it uh, intimately. She knows it very, very well. Um, other than that, thank you for listening to me. <laughs> 